article called The Politics of Budgetary Reform. And he points it out, which, you know, something we read now, as, as certainly as social scientists, I read that now, and I think, yeah, obviously this is true, but it, it, it required saying that reforms are often couched in the language of efficiency. But what they do is they change institutions, and by changing institutions, you touch upon the power relations of political actors. Reforms are always political. And that understanding that and keeping that in mind, uh, I think is very important in understanding why reforms fail and also the potential and suitability for particular reforms in very particular contexts. Um, so let me very briefly talk about uh, some reforms that are discussed in here and just by pointing towards how politics is really important in understanding when they might be suitable and when, when they might work. So if you think about the political limits of reform, one of the prime examples I can think of is performance budgeting. You look across the OECD, you see some countries that have gone incredibly far with performance budgeting. The UK is, is, is a prime example, has been a real pioneer in, in many ways. Uh, New Zealand, Australia are other examples of this. And then you see some countries that just are not getting there and uh, they're not doing it. Uh, and, and that's, for example, the US, United States, there have been many reforms. If you look at the US budget approved by Congress or the, the Appropriation Act, there are thousands and thousands of line items in there. If you look at the German budget, mm. it has thousands of line items. And that's very different to this kind of highly aggregated, letting managers manage one line per department appropriation act that you get in some countries like the UK. I remember you mentioned the transport budget a few years ago. Uh, the, the line that was the appropriation for the Department of Transport was essentially a single line called transport that works for everyone. Imagine doing that in the US. There's no chance that the US Congress will approve a single line Department of Transport budget. Just no chance. What's behind this? It's power relations. It's the role of the legislature in this particular case. Program budgeting reforms in Germany, for example, were not adopted recently because the Bundestag just said, no, we don't want to change the way we appropriate money in this country. The, the parliament is too powerful. So we need to think about which context and political context as well supports certain types of reforms. And this is one, one particular example in this regard. Um, fiscal councils. There's a lot to say about fiscal councils. Mar Marco said flavor of the month. Um, and I think they have, of course, a role to play. And uh, in some places, they, they are very, very important and they've made a very positive contribution. But again, they can come about very often for political reasons. If you look at one of the biggest fiscal councils, at least you know, included in the lists of fiscal councils that are being circulated, is the Congressional Budget Office. Mm -hmm. It came about in the 1970s when Congress wanted to rebalance its power relations with the executive and, and create a counterweight to uh, OMB. Uh, if you look at other big budget offices that exist, other types of fiscal councils, uh, like in uh, South Korea or in Mexico, they, these, these came about for similar political reasons because certain actors wanted to strengthen their role in budgetary decisions or limit the, the, the role and dominance of other actors. And, cer and certain problems that these types of institutions have encountered are due to political factors. If you th think of Sweden, you think of Canada and the kinds of problems that fiscal councils have run into uh, uh, they are political, inherently political. I want to bring you to a close in a sec. Yeah, I have one last point. Okay. And I think it, it is something that this book is very aware of. And if you, it's, it's the point that we know a lot of institutions that have come about that are new, new things people are trying out in, in public financial management to get to better resource management. A big question is still whether you can, how easily you can transplant these institutions. So they come about in some places endogenously through the kind of domestic political process. But what's going on in Europe, for example, at the moment is that the Commission is trying to impose exogenously, some you could say, 
a certain set of institutions on a very large number of countries. And whether that will work equally, we equally, equally well, I think, is extremely kind of questionable. So I think these are kind of three areas where, two examples and kind of one bigger point where I think uh, politics really is a big part of the answer uh, uh, when, when one thinks about do these institutions work, why do they come about in the first place. Thank you very much. 